Today I will comment on Neville Goddard's 1969 lecture, Power Called the Law. And while I do so, come along with us while we celebrate spring at a Japanese cafe in the Japanese countryside near Mount Fuji. I didn't actually know it was a vegetarian restaurant, but the photos look so lovely online that I just had to go there. And here, Neville shares a story of a testimonial from a gentleman he knows who practices the law. About 10 days ago, my wife told me of a little girl, only 14 months old, who had developed lumps on her neck, in which when the doctor removed and tested a lump, there were signs of cancer. Three specialists had been brought in, and each separately had declared the child had cancer. Only one doctor, looking at the results, questioned the verdict but they were keeping the child in the hospital for further examination. As I listened to her story, I cued my wife's voice out to the point that I couldn't even hear what she was saying. But hearing her voice, I reconstructed the story and heard its revision in my mind's eye. That night as I fell asleep, I listened again and again, my wife tell me the revised story. A few days later, the doctor made another test from another lump, and the vote was unanimous. The child did not have cancer, and since they had performed no remedial treatment in the hospital, they determined she never did have cancer, for without treatment the child could not have overcome the condition. When the wife heard the new verdict, she told the grandmother and mother what I had done, but they could not believe that an imaginal act has any power of causation. So with this example that Neville shares and the countless examples, we come to see that perhaps everything in this physical world comes from a spiritual cause, and that may be hard for many to understand at first, because we've always believed there's some cause and effect. But many can't see this pattern, because they forget the thoughts, the things they interacted with, the things they became immersed with, the reactions they felt. They forget those seeds they planted. So when the time comes that the harvest comes as tangible experiences in the physical world, which you call reality, Caesar's world, you don't remember. Or maybe you were even aimlessly going through life, and someone else treaded the wine press. That's why it's important for you. Get clear what you want, and invest in yourself imaginatively, feeling the good feelings you'd feel if you had what you wanted, and that will keep you immune to the effects when others tread the wine press, especially when it's something you don't want. By treading the wine press, we mean, for example, when a mother excessively worries for her child, and then attracts the very incident that was worried about or something similar, close call, or maybe they hear their worst fears come alive on some story on the news or TV, but why did they attract that? And then it makes them feel that maybe they're justified in their fear, but Neville's teaching you, oh no. Instead, why did you attract to hear that story, or attract the experiences in your life? Blaming will only delay you mastering your fate, your imagination. So instead, let it all be wisely used. What do you want instead? Feel those feelings as though they're real. Tune out when you hear the things you don't want to grow in your life. Now I know sometimes people get off on the thrills of life. Scary stories, horror movies. After all, even the news knows that the darker sides of life sell more. But when you've had enough, you've truly had enough, you will close the door on such suffering for cheap thrills. And you will find the true, eternal, profound joy within. And all things justly reflecting on the outside. And now Neville tells another story, and I can relate to this one because I did something similar. This is how a man manifested more income in his life. Driving home from work the other night, I was thinking I could use a little more cash, as Uncle Sam would be making demands upon my income. Then I began to imagine lovely, green, crisp currency raining down on me. For about one minute, I lost myself in a little shower of green currency, Then the traffic demanded my attention, and I assumed my normal, alert state, and forgot all about my imaginal act until the morning of the 15th of April. At that time, my boss entered the office and said, You will receive a 10% raise in salary retroactive to April 1st, and handed me a check. Now some will feel this is coincidence, but when you continue to read such stories, and to start to do it on your own, you will find it is more than just a coincidence. And sometimes it really does happen right away. But at some point, there will be something you want that doesn't happen right away. And then you have to come to the next level to be able to persist until it does become so. And as you refine this imaginal muscle and build your experiences thus conviction, you can even reach the point where some mystics who instantly get what they want, even what seems out of thin air. And with all these examples Neville gives, how lovely it could be 
when we can all learn to turn to imagination, even such a simple and satisfying imaginal act as just feeling money raining all around you and the joy that brings, and then let it go and let it find you. In closing, Neville says, Learn to live in your imagination morning, noon, and night. This gentleman whose experiences I shared with you tonight told me that when he first heard me, he thought I was crazy, but he tried it, and although it didn't make sense, it worked. I know the law and the promise do not make sense from a worldly point of view, yet I tell you, there is a plan of redemption buried in you, which will erupt in the fullness of time, and you will experience all that is said of a man called Jesus in scripture. Then you will know he was never a physical being, but the name of a plan. Jesus is Jehovah, who is your own wonderful I Am. And what Neville is talking about here is the I Am. It's your awareness that was here before you were even born, and that you return to, that which is aware in hearing these words now, that is beyond a body and a mind. And you know this because when numerous people have near-death experiences, they're said to have actually died, their heartbeat stopped, they experience a freedom, a love, a beauty beyond the body and mind. They feel ever alive. So know that you are not just this body and mind. You are more. But while here dreaming this dream of life, you can learn to co-create and enjoy all the wonderful experiences of your noble desires until that thirst comes upon you to know your true essence beyond all this. And may we then balance it, never forgetting what we truly are while enjoying this dream of life, lucidly and nobly. And now as we go into the silence, why don't we all imagine money, wealth, raining down upon us, showering us. And any time we come to think about this, maybe for some they do it once and get some good news in the near future, or maybe some of you will continue this as a daily practice, or literally even morning, noon, and night, when you wake up after your lunch, before you go to bed, how does it feel to hear the kaching or the crisp bills of money all around you, saturating you? And now, with that, let us go into the silence. <laughs> Good. 